do you, would you say that your job is getting easier or getting harder? I don't know. It's tough. I, I think there's a lot of, when I moved over from C to A, the things I expected to be harder were not the things that were harder. I think hmm. that mainly in that when I did seed investing, I treated it as if every deal that I did a seed in was my series A. You know, I never did a deal in a single meeting. There were multiple meetings. I did the diligence. I did the work. I spent time with the entrepreneurs after I invested. I helped them raise. So this was not, he's an awesome investor, but I'm the pole. I was the polar opposite of Ron Conway. He made 700 investments in the last 10 years. I made 70. Wow. It, so, you know, doing seven to 10 investments a year, not exactly high velocity. I could, you know, remember I said I haven't found anything wow in a while and I was bummed out. I remember going six months without finding a seed deal that wow. I wanted to invest in. And was, I mean, I know venture firms that would do more seed deals in a month than I would do in a year. Actually, I knew a venture firm at one point that did more deals in six months than I did in 10 years. Wow. Guys working on it. So, you know, there's different types of seed, but because I was so much more attached to them and so much more involved, I feel like a lot of the decision processes and the way I think, not that that's right, is not where the big differences are. Hmm. Because I'm not thinking like, okay, is this an appropriate seed investment when I'm making a Series A decision? I'm thinking, is this a company I would have taken out and expected to get funded on the Series A in the first place? Hmm. So I spent so much, I mean, I got to know 250 venture capitalists so that I could take my entrepreneurs to them. So in a lot of ways, I got sort of a PhD in venture through the lens of all of those other investors that I could figure out who did what well and who did what not so well and make my hmm. own out of standardized on that. So, that part's not what's harder. That part, actually, what was hard for, was for me to realize after a while that the signals I'm looking for are very similar. No momentum being one of them. You know, mm. I had to be really delicate in my sense of, is this right for this person, right? And it's really about, is this a venture scale opportunity? So now I'm just on the other side taking, it's interesting. There are, remember I told you half my companies raised Series A and beyond? I would not personally have Series A backed at least half of those that did. Wow. Not, they didn't go on to do great things. Some did, some didn't. It's just my own bar internally was, I know what's fundable. It's just, if this is the range of fundable, I still want to be over here. I want elite athletes, but I want the elite of the elite athletes. Hmm. So that does make it hard because anytime you find those are almost always competitive. Um, it also makes it hard because I'm having to find new sources you know, I've got a good network for seed and I, because of that and because of my entrepreneurs, I get really good deal flow still for seed, but also for series A. It's just, there is an incremental difference. And so that has to be worked out. So that's hard. Um, there's a lot of money on the sidelines right now for mm. wants to get invested. And I'm not talking just about the venture firms that have been raised. I'm talking about China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, sovereign wealth funds, family offices, private equity groups. You know, there's a lot of people playing in this game. So it changes the dynamic. Mm -hmm. changes the pricing, which can be a pain because I would like to pay an appropriate price because it has meaningful impact over time to return. And it has impact to the entrepreneur because if you raise at the wrong number too early, sometimes that next round never happens. And can you talk about that a little bit? Well, it's, it's a really hard one. I mean, I certainly can talk about it. It's just, you know, there are certain lessons that you can tell an entrepreneur that even mm -hmm. if you've lived through it, and they still can't learn them from the words. <laughs> One of those is, it's funny because it was, uh, it's so painful to watch the show Silicon Valley, and yet so true. <laughs> right? Yes. You remember the one where he was in the bar with the guy, and he's like, what? You, you mean I could have taken a round at a lower price and not gotten crammed down and not been diluted and not been washed out of the company and fired? In a, you know, remember that? Yes. If you raise at too high of a number, you set everybody's expectations. So remember how I said venture loves velocity? Mm -hmm. They like it in fundraising too. Mm. So everybody wants to see the same curve. Nobody in Silicon Valley is looking for a deal. No one wants a discount or a special. They're all looking for the deal. And they know that the deal is red hot and goes for a premium. So if you raise at 100 out of the box in a Series A, $100 million valuation, man, you just set the bar about as high up as you can go. Because that's pretty much all-time record territory. Tiny handful of companies have done that. Mm. But your Series B, you better be absolutely killing it. Because you started off selling belief. 
dreams, vision. You start off selling sizzle. Mm -hmm. right, series B, if you weren't already doing it at Series A, you're selling steak. So you raise too high, you better be showing me the most elegant porterhouse steak I've ever seen in my life. And when I eat it, I better live forever. Because <laughs> otherwise, what? I'm going to pay you what? You know, everybody wants a natural progression in a perfect world. They like everything to double. Oh, we raised it 100, so we should raise it too. Not fair, not realistic. It depends on where your business is. But the progression makes a lot of sense if you see it as being indicative of a healthy, exciting company with the right growth trajectory and velocity and everything else. And by the way, you can't BS it. Because entrepreneurs used to always ask me about game theory and how do we do this and how do we do it? I'm like, dude, you're going to get paid for what you're doing, you know, particularly post A. It's super, super rare to end up continuing the sizzle story. It happens. But... You know, you can't solve for the one in 500. You got to solve for sort of what the normal day-to-day -day exciting hot series state companies look like. And that's already a pretty elite tier. So, you know. Wow. Just balance it.